I very intentionally broke my honey fast. I've been fasting from sugar. It's probably been about two months and it's overall been feeling pretty good. There have been some moments, of course, where I've been like wanting something a bit more than fruit, but I've been sticking with it. And then today when I woke up, I was just like, I'd intended to fast. Yesterday I was having, well, even before Thanksgiving, I've sort of been having some discomfort um, in my digestion. Thanksgiving certainly didn't help that situation. And last night I was feeling like, I don't feel like I need any more food in my body. Like I'm gonna fast tomorrow. And then today I got up and I, <laughs> Maya's licking my foot and <laughs> it tickles. Um, and, I don't know when it happened. Time's been really, um, time's been really wonky for me today. But at some point, like I visualized eating honey, um, but a very like sacred way, um, in a way that honors bees and it honors the magic that is honey. And I had to go to Whole Foods to pick up my package that arrived with my brand new book. I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be reading this all day. Um, I'm glad I don't really have anything else planned today because that's going to, that's going to keep me pretty occupied. Um, but I got that and then I just decided to like wander around because I was feeling like I wanted fresh food and I was doing some automatic writing this morning and some of what came through is eating fresh fruit and vegetables um, not eating any meat except for like fresh fish if I wanted to and um, not eating processed food um, for for at least for today and so I felt good about that I was looking around I was looking at the apples and I was looking at the I saw bananas and then all of a sudden I had an image of like, like dripping a banana in some honey. And I was like, oh my God, that sounds perfect. And I checked in and I felt good about it. I previously contemplated including honey because through muscle testing, I've no Maya. Through muscle testing, I determined that honey is okay for me, but other sugars are not. And so I had already sort of knew this, but I didn't just want to like, I wanted to stick to my original intention, which was no sugar at all. Um, and so finally coming to the point where like, I felt like spirit was guiding me to like, hey, like bring this in in a very intentional way. Um, like it's okay. I felt um, I felt good to go ahead and proceed with that. So I bought the honey and, um, it's like a raw, a raw honey from Southern California. I forget the brand. I got it from Whole Foods. Um, and yeah, it was like the, when I came to the honey aisle, uh, the honey section, it was like the first jar that I looked at was the one that I ended up getting. So I got that and I got some bananas and I got a honey crisp apple. And so um, I got back and I, I blessed the honey. I prayed for it. I thanked it. And now it lives on my altar. And I took a spoonful of it put it onto like a little separate plate and then I've been um, dipping like banana in it and eating it. And um, it's been delicious. And it's also just been so like, just so like nurturing in a way that's hard to describe. Like I'm on my third banana I like ate two bananas right away when I got back and then it's probably been like an hour and a half or so and I'm 
eating my third banana. And um, when I took like the first bite of this third banana with the honey on it, like I felt like I was transported and I was like in this field with tall wildflowers and surrounded by bees and and the flowers are like really tall they were like I don't know like up to like my stomach or my chest they were really tall and I was like running through it and I could feel the soft baby grass underneath the tall grass and it was like a little bit damp and I could feel it as I ran through this field and I was just really happy and I was like looking back and looking around me and it's like all I could see was like flowers and trees and then I ended up sinking down to the ground and was like surrounded like I was in this other world and I was like all the tall wildflower stalks were around me and I was like down here closer to the earth and it was like a little dark and cool and then I was just laying in just laying on the ground in the grass with like bees were like crawling on me and like it, it tickled and I was like laughing it was so beautiful and I got like goosebumps all over and um, what came to mind to say was like oh I like like I went somewhere like I was taken to where, the place where this honey came from and I was like no like this honey brought that place brought that energy to me like I didn't go anywhere like I'm just right here but the energy of this honey of what of the beings that created it um, was brought to me so yeah, it feels so good right now. It just also like I love like indulgent, luxurious things, and I think they're best done in moderation with high variety. That way, nothing ever gets too old, or you don't get too used to something, or you don't overdo something. But like, I'm eating this. Look at this. Like the honey is like dripping. I don't even know if you can see it. It's gonna like drip down at some point. This honey's thick, but it's not like hard. It's like the perfect consistency. Oh, <laughs> it fell. <laughs> so, let's focus that back on me. Yeah. So, mm, so good. And it's like the perfect thing to eat while learning something new. I don't know. I love learning stuff. I love reading books. I love learning systems and learning more about myself and the world around me and people and human design. Um, it's just that. An opportunity to learn more so don't be surprised if I turn into like a human design nerd um cuz When something like works and makes sense and clicks for me, it's hard for me not to get obsessed with it. So, hmm. it's also just like. Fasting is such a gift, the ability to go without, because when you then have the thing, it just tastes amazing. Like this honey literally tastes amazing. It has so much flavor. And like the sweetness of it, it's just so intense too. I haven't had anything this sweet in a long time. So, 
and it's incomparable to like the sweetness of fruits like fruits can be really sweet um they can be especially if they're ripe but in order to get a fruit that nears the sweetness of like a honey you would have to like ferment the fruit or something or no that would add alcohols to it I don't know you'd have to do something to it I think you have to ferment it a little bit but to the point where it's not like to there's not too high of an alcohol content that I think it can taste sweeter than it would if it were a fruit oh I think also if you freeze fruits and then juice them they taste sweeter because you take out some of the water content of it I think that's what they do with um, ice wine. It's made from frozen grapes and it's like called dessert wine because it's really sweet. But I think that's what you'd have to do. But who will want to replace honey? Honey's great. I don't know if you know this, but. Um, My dog Maya loves bananas and <laughs> she's staring at me looking like it's so interesting how her face changes like her eyes change and her face changes and like the shape of her like face changes depending on like how she's feeling and I don't know that anyone really notices it the way I do because I'm around her all the time. But yeah, sometimes it creeps me out. And it's like, I feel like she's like <laughs> penetrating me with her energy. <laughs> um, I was talking to someone about this. Um, my um, friend Jordan Rame, I think I'm saying his last name right, is um, really knowledgeable on human design. Um, I would give one kudos to him. He's very knowledgeable. And um, I asked him a question about like human design and pets. And he had a really, really um, insightful and um, resonant response to my query about that but um yeah i shouldn't look at her like that i didn't look at her at all she's just gonna want i'm gonna shut up and eat this but that now What if I like every time, like I have this honey on my altar and so every time I come, I have to, I have to say a thanks for getting some honey. And it's really adds a layer of intentionality and also reverence. I pulled that card recently. Um, from a friend's tarot deck reverence and um, to something that a lot of people don't even think to thoughts about, you know, eating. They're like, oh, just shove it in my mouth <laughs> and it's done, you know? A lot of people don't pray or bless their food anymore. I didn't for a long time um, until this year I started doing it again and 
It's so important to me and it makes me enjoy and appreciate my food and where it comes from and um, all of the effort and energy that went into bringing that food to me so much more. And I just had the thought that what if I just had, you know, what if every time I made a meal, like I had like a food altar essentially, or, um, or maybe every time I stepped into the kitchen, I said a prayer or I said a thanks for whatever I intended to consume from it, or even even more doable just on my altar. Um, just whenever I, you know, have food that I'm about to eat, I give some of that food to my altar, to my ancestors and to the earth and just thank it, thank them for everything that they do for me and for their presence in my life. And if I did that every single time I ate, I would probably eat, I'd probably eat different foods. Today is like a peak day for food choices but I don't always have peak food choices. And so it's just adding for me, this adds like another level of awareness um, to that. It's like, you know, I'm in the store, I'm looking for foods, blah, blah, blah. I see something that wasn't on my list, but I'm, I'm feeling like I should buy it, feeling called to buy it. And I um, pick the item up and I think about how like every, every time I eat, I give some food to my ancestors. Well, it's this food that I would, that would really f like fuel them, that would nourish them, that would support them, that they would be honored to receive. Um, and if the food isn't good enough to offer to my ancestors or to my spirit guides, then why would I put it in my body? Why? Like, if I feel like I can't put some Lay's potato chips on my altar, then I shouldn't put it in me either. So that's what came to mind. And um, it makes me want to add a few things to my altar so that I can then um, start making um, food offerings because... I mean, I have this little vision, so I might as well do it. <laughs> and then I can, um, and then I can start taking notes of what happens or how it impacts me. And then I can share this in more detail with you all. Um, yeah, I love ritual. I love ritual. It makes me feel so grounded and connected to me. And yeah, so, okay. All right. Mm, so good. Wow. Can dogs eat honey? I think so. I'm gonna Google this really quick. Dogs eat honey. Mmm. Okay. So they say the honey is safe in small quantities. Um, they say sugars can cause tooth decay, so it's probably a good idea to brush your teeth. I'm not going to brush Maya's teeth, so I'm not going to give her a lot. Just, like, lick my finger. But it says raw honey shouldn't be fed to puppies or dogs with compromised immune system. Because it can contain the presence of both botulism spores. Botulism? Botulism? That's a weird word. Botulism. How do you pronounce that? Botulism. Oh, botulism. That's how it's pronounced. So it's botulism. Hmm. 
Okay. Well, I'm not concerned about that. Maya, come here. Do you want to lick my finger? Oh, she likes that. Why wouldn't you like that? It's honey. Everyone likes honey. Okay. That's all you get. I don't want you getting botulism. Mmm. <laughs> When I first started reading the human design book, and I've read every single word from the beginning, like the foreword, the introduction, all the quotes, like all of it. I, I want to read all of it. So, um, I got, I don't know. I don't know how far I got into the book. I'm on page 36 right now. So it's probably around like, maybe like page 15 or so. And I was reading. And then I started tearing up and I started crying. And um, I just felt so happy <laughs> reading this book. And I just felt like it's exactly what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And so I just felt like everything was like perfect. And also just like acquiring knowledge for me is, I don't know how to describe it. Like if I had to go the rest of my life without ever reading another book, I think that I would cry. I don't think that it would be worth living if I couldn't acquire more knowledge. It's just so important for me and really like fuels me and my desire to understand myself and the world. So, um, I'm really excited to like be able to, to get further into the book and start learning about like the gates and the channels because um, I feel like I know um, I have extensive knowledge about the projector aura type um, which is what I am and so I don't really necessarily feel a need I feel like like that information is going to be um, any more enlightening than what I've already learned like online but um, there isn't a lot of like um, clear information in regards to the gates and there's this guy on YouTube that made a video about each of the gates and um, but he talks weird and when I listen to him it's just like it feels like some of the stuff he says just like I hear it and it sounds like gibberish it's not that he's I'm sure that like I don't know his videos also don't have a lot of views so maybe it's not just me but I just, I listen to him and it's just like, I don't even, I didn't even hear what you said. So, sometimes it's like that. Sometimes, like that's a thing. Like, there are some people who talk and I just can't hear them. And, um, it's not that I'm not a good listener. I certainly am a good listener, especially one-on-one -on -one with people. But... I am, I believe that we're meant to hear the information that we hear and that information that we don't hear, we're not meant to hear. It's the same thing with like books or like, you know, TV shows or whatever. Like, like if you're meant to be presented with information, then you're going to be presented with that information. And if it doesn't, if it isn't meant to be there, then you're just not going to end up absorbing it or observing it. And I believe that that's a-okay with me because <laughs> I don't need to yeah I don't need to be exposed to everyone's thoughts on things and I have a feeling that this book this book will be a better guide to me about the gates than that due to YouTube video so all right I'm gonna get back to reading I, uh, 
I made it to page 66 of the human design book and I just realized how tired I am. I just, there's so much information in the book and I'm feeling like, like I was about to go into the next chapter, which is on the Ajna Center. And I was just like, if I keep reading, I don't know how much I'll retain. So I'm going to take a nap and let myself digest the things that I've read and then wake up and then I'll I'll keep reading some more. So what time is it right now? Can I, I can't see time when I'm recording a video, but I think it's like probably one something. So yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna take a nap. And Maya's right there. <laughs> What are you smiling about? It's nap time. It's nap time, Maya. Why are you making that face at me? It's nap time. You're like, I've been napping all morning. Well, I haven't, so I, so I need a nap. Yes, I love you too. Yes, I do. But it's nap time. Okay. <laughs> howdy, howdy. I am on page 106 of this book. I'm about a quarter of the way through, looks like. There's, how many pages are in here? Um, about 439 pages. So I'm about, yeah, I'm about a quarter way through the book. And I, the nap I took was very lovely. And then I got up and what did I do? I read more and I ate some, like, food. I actually was feeling like eating something a bit more than fruit. Well, I ate an apple and then probably like a couple hours after the apple I ate some chicken some baked chicken and some broccoli that was delicious and um and then I was on a call for the fit for service program I'm in and it was such a good call so good like I actually got some things that I could take away and like start incorporating into like my routine and practices so I'm looking forward to that and just really shifting my mindset. It was about money. And so, um, yeah, I'm like definitely going to put into practice some of those things because um, my whole year, my, my sort of intention for this year was to break free and release all of my limiting beliefs and blocks in my root chakra, especially around like safety, security, and money. And um, I feel like I've done a lot of really good work with that so far this year. Um, there is still some more work to do though. And I feel like putting into practice some of the things that um, I got from that workshop is gonna be super helpful for me. And, um, and then after that, I did more reading, which led me to the page I'm on now. And um, I'm really excited to get to the gates um, because I feel like the gates get into like the nitty gritty of human design. And um, I think it's interesting that human design works off of the, um, the Western Zodiac, the Western, Western astrology as compared to Vedic astrology. Um, I'm sort of curious why. I mean, Ra isn't alive anymore, so I, I can't. Well, maybe I could ask him. Maybe I'll ask him in a dream and see what he says. See if I get an answer. Um, yeah, I'm really curious. Yeah, and I want to get to the part about the gates. I sort of just want to like skip to all the parts that, that relate to myself. <laughs> Because I I got this book because like I really wanted to delve myself into um, all of these little details 
and and then after I do this if I feel like I need to get a reading then I'll go about getting a reading but I just I like learning stuff like this anyway and I feel like this is something that can certainly hurt help me and I can use this information to help other people too so I feel like the book was a good investment but yeah I'm like excited to read more but then also feeling like tired like I keep noticing that my shoulders are like up and I have to consciously like relax them and I think that's because I'm like craning my head down looking at this book on the desk so I've tried to read in different positions but honestly like I feel like I just need like a book stand <laughs> and now I'm like I understand why people have book stands um because the strain on the neck is real and oh that felt good I've had like a history of issues with like neck, neck tension and neck pain. So I'm definitely not trying to like make my neck any worse. But um, yeah, I'm feeling really good today. Feeling really good right now. And um, <sighs> yeah, yeah, I am. It was 8.58 p.m. I always see like angel numbers like that. So it's sort of cool. Um, but I made it to page one, what, 114 and I'm like done. 114 is like the new chapter. It's section four about the four types and strategies. And um, yeah, I'm just... Yeah, I'm I'm done mentally for today. Reading and my neck's starting to get tired. So it's time for bed. And yeah, it's time for bed. And Maya's been sleeping, but whenever I make too much noise, she wakes up. And I also just gave her some food. Like a treat. Like some chicken. So now she's wide awake and she's like, oh, I'm getting food. Like, so, um, all right. This is good night. Bye. <laughs>